Hello, I am Sujoy and I am back with another tutorial for you on operation research. So today I will tell you about the application of simplex method. This is my 50th video on operation research. With this video, I am completing half century on operation research videos. I have already uploaded 49 videos on operation research. So this is the 50th video. I have uploaded videos on assignment problems, transportation problems, game theory, queuing theory, linear programming problems or LPPs, network analysis or project management. I have uploaded videos on that covering almost all the topics in them. So as you can understand, it takes a lot of effort for me to make a video like this. For example, to make a video for you, I have to go through several rigorous processes. For example, in the first step, first I have to do research and study myself on the topic or on the subject I will teaching you. And second, I have to make the notes and the presentations like this one. For that, I have to refer several books. I have to type in the presentation. I have to draw the diagrams, networks and pictures, all that. And in step three, I have to record the video all by myself. In the step four, I have to edit the video, which is the most time consuming process. And in step five, I have to upload the video. Sometimes the video size is very large, for example, 500 MBs or so. And in step six, I have to put the video description, video title, video thumbnail uh, to make the video presentable to you. So basically, to make a simple video or a single video for you, uh, I have to do a lot of effort uh, on that. But the thing which bothers me, very few people basically like the video or share the video after watching the video. And only few of them basically subscribe to the channel after watching any of the video. So whenever I see a like or a share on my video, it basically makes me very happy. And when I see someone commenting that they are getting helped and getting benefited with my videos, that really encourages me. So if you find my videos helpful, I would request you to please like the video using the like button below and please share the video on your social channels like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, etc. Because by liking and sharing the video, not only you will encourage me, but also you can help someone else by sharing the knowledge. Because sharing is caring and knowledge is meant to be shared. So I think I have expressed my views to you. So let's start the video for today. So today I will tell you about the application of simplex method and also how to solve a simplex problem by a little shortcut technique. This video is gonna be a little lengthy. Uh, I will divide the video in three parts. This is the first part. So our objective function is minimize z or mean z equals to 4x plus 7y plus 2z subjected to x plus y greater than or equals to 2, 2x plus z greater than or equals to 5, and x, y, and z all greater than or equals to 0. They are called non-negative constraints. Their value can be 0 or positive only, cannot be negative. So now the benefits of simplex method. Benefit number one, it is the most accurate method of solving any linear programming problems or LPPs. Benefit 2. The simplex method can be solved with lesser number of constraints. As you can see in our objective function, the number of unknowns are 3, x, y and z. As you may already know, to find out 3 unknowns, we need at least 3 number of equations. For example, if we are solving a system of linear equations, let's say by Gauss elimination method or by Gauss Jordan elimination method, then to find out the values of three unknowns, you need at least three equations. But that is the application of simplex method. By simplex method, you can find out the values of three unknowns with the help of two constraints only. These are our constraint number one and this is our constraint number two. And also here the constraints are not of equal to type or they are not equations, they are inequalities. So basically with the help of inequalities and also with lesser number of constraints, 
we can find out the values for more number of unknowns so that is another advantage of using the simplex method benefit number three simplex method works with greater than equal to type less than equal to type and equal to type constraints no matter what type of constraints uh, you are given you can solve all of them by the simplex method benefit number four the simplex method can easily be modified according to the nature of the problem nature means the type of the objective function here the type of the objective function is of minimization type mean z also if the objective function is of maximization type that can also be solved by the simplex method and also there are several variants of the simplex method like the general simplex method standard simplex method dual simplex method duality in simplex method to solve various types of problems so simplex method is also very diverse method benefit number 5 the simplex method can easily be implemented on computers basically we have to program the computer with the simplex algorithm the simplex method you can say an advanced form of iteration method where if you program the computer with the algorithm it does not matter uh, how many numbers of unknowns are there or how many numbers of constraints are there basically the computer will follow the algorithm uh, no matter the number of constraints or unknowns and it will gi give the answer to you it may take more processing power or more time but eventually the solving process will be same for the computer so that is the meaning of uh, point number 5 benefit number 6 the simplex method overcomes the limitation of the graphical method we can also solve linear programming problems by graphical method basically for two unknowns we need a two dimensional graph x and y and for solving three unknowns we need a three dimensional graph x y and z so it is effective up to three dimensions or three unknowns only for a graphical method over that it is not possible to draw a 3d a 4d or 5d graph on a paper so that is the limitation of graphical method but with simplex method we can solve as i mentioned any number of constraints or any number of unknowns so simplex method overcomes the limitation of graphical method for solving linear programming problems benefit number 7 the simplex method is linked with the objective function if we consider these constraints as equals to then the first constraint will become x plus y equals to 2 similarly if you convert all the constraints into equations then you can think them as a system of linear equations but uh, the simplex method is not just solving the system of linear equations the system of linear equations or system of constraints are solved with respect to the objective function so here we do the solving with some goal so our goal here is to minimize z z is the objective value so we have to minimize the value of z for some values of x y and z so our objective is to find out such value of x y and z for which the value of capital z or objective value will be minimum so those are the benefits of simplex method now let's solve the problem so since the given problem is of minimization type lpp or linear programming problem we need to convert it into a maximization type problem by changing the sign of the objective function right now the objective function is 4x plus 7y plus 2z so if we change the signs from plus to minus we'll get max z star or max z asterisk which is the opposite of the mean z equals to minus 4x minus 7y minus 2z where the max z star equals to minus or mean z and now since the left hand side of the inequalities are greater than since they are of greater than or equals to type then the rhs we need to subtract something from the left hand side to get them balanced and to get the equals to sign so the variables subtracted in case of greater than equals to type constraints are called the surplus variables and in case of less than equals to type constraints we basically add something to the left hand side to get the equals to sign and those variables are called slack variables in that case since the left hand side is greater than 
So we can assume the left hand side is larger or greater than the right hand side. So we need to subtract something from the left hand side to get them balanced or to get the a equals to sign. So we'll subtract the variable p from the constraint number 1 and we'll subtract the variable q from the constraint number 2. And the variables p and q are called the surplus variables. So this is the end of the part 1 of this video. The link to part 2 of this video will be given in the video description below and also embedded on this video. All the parts will be uploaded at the same time. So after watching this part, you can watch the next part very easily. So how was the video? Let me know in the comments below. See you in my next video. And still then, stay connected by subscribing.